The scariest part about outside civilizations is that they could already be on their way to us. Before telling you how that's possible, let's discuss how we could have an advantage on that. Anti-matter spaceships, star-sized engines, and galaxy-wide networks full of Space Rule 34 would all be really noisy. I'll explain the meaning of noise in a moment. NASA could find traces of such noise. They kind of think. Because there are ways to look for each of these and more. So, so, this is a Dyson Sphere. It's a mega structure that could encompass a whole star. To generate more energy in a few seconds than the entirety of the human race has consumed in its whole existence. It's something that a hypothetically super advanced civilization could build to satisfy their needs for super high energy consumption to do things such as producing antimatter to fuel their spaceships. More on that in a moment. Anyways, the shell gobbling up the energy would re-radiate some of it, but it would be at a different frequency than the original one emitted by the star. And that sucks for them because by observing that the waves coming from a star do not quite match the typical ones emitted by stars of the same kind, we could find a potential location for advanced life maybe on one of the planets orbiting the suspicious star. This signal and any others emitted by alien tech are called techno-signature, traces emitted by the presence of technology in a given location. Wow! How about we look for inhabited planets? Dyson spheres are super sci-fi. Focusing on them would exclude a lot of civilizations that are not advanced enough to build them. I mean, we're right here and we haven't touched our greasy, fat ball of fire at all. But see, looking for planets is an extremely difficult challenge. It's been compared to looking for a firefly using binoculars, but there's a lighthouse in the background. I'll tell you how we can do that in a moment. Now let's say we can actually look at faraway planets. What would you even look for? One idea is to search for CFCs. Chlorofluor... 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 Chlorofluorocarbons, the thing that put that gaping hole in our ozone layer. Which is healing but hasn't healed fully? That won't happen for another 40 years at least. Enough sidetracking, we believe that those chemicals don't ever occur naturally. Plus their presence in a planet's atmosphere is easily spotted, as they reflect light in a very peculiar way. There's also a list of many other chemicals with similar properties. One obstacle in looking for all this stuff is interference. The plethora of signals that we produce here on Earth is huge, making us deaf to much quieter but potentially useful signals. One of the fixes proposed in a NASA-sponsored paper is to build an observatory on the dark side of the moon. The specifics are yet to be determined, but the rationale behind it is that the moon's thick, juicy ass would block the majority of interference coming from Earth, allowing us to listen for much quieter signals. Such an observatory could find suitable planets, and one thing we could look for are these things known as heat highlands. Here on Earth, the average temperature inside of a city is always slightly higher than the temperature in the surrounding area. If another civilization were to live in a similar way to us, they would probably alter the local climate of their settlements in a much similar way. This is a really far-fetched theory though. NASA also studied the terrestrial planet finder, a brute force source with a network of space telescopes scouting for planets outside the solar system. They cancelled it in 2011. They also established the HRMS program in which they used radio telescope to scan 10 million different frequencies, looking for alien transmissions. Thanks to this guy, the project was cancelled after less than a year. But an independent badass organization called the SETI Institute picked up from where NASA left, under the name Project Phoenix, as a big f you to this guy. What if instead we focused on spaceships? Vehicles built by really advanced civilizations capable of reaching a fraction of the speed of light. They could employ various means of propulsion. Magnetic sails are a theorized mechanism that could allow motion without any fuel. These sails leverage plasma winds from nearby stars to generate propulsion and move around. They would emit a very specific signal known as synchrotron radiation, which would be detectable. It is actually... I couldn't understand it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If these high tech spaceships were instead to use fuel, they would probably go with antimatter. I was talking about it before, remember? No? You got TikTok brain and no attention span? You fu. It's the exact opposite of matter. Every atom around you is made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Apparently, there are opposites for those particles positrons, antiprotons, and antineutrons, and they make their own anti atoms. Now, when matter and antimatter collide, they annihilate and they annihilate. Annihilate. 
okay, and release a lot of energy as radiation. The amount of it is described by Einstein's E equals mc squared law. A collision between one kilogram of matter and one kilogram of antimatter would cause an explosion more devastating than the one caused by the Tsar Bomba. That is the biggest nuclear explosion ever made on Earth. Antimatter-fueled rockets would emit gamma rays, the radiation from the annihilation, and we could probably tell that the signal would be moving at an unusual speed for celestial bodies. What if instead of using spaceships, aliens were moving whole ass stars and planets? There could be bad crazy aliens that could build Shkadov thrusters, engines capable of moving entire stars, including the planets orbiting them. The fundamental idea is to just put a mirror, but huge, right next to a star. Light can actually push things, so when the photons bounce on the mirror and hit the star back, they push it away. Now it's a puny push. After 1 million years, the star would be moving by 20 meters per second. After 1 billion years, it would be moving by 20 kilometers per second. And it would have traversed a third of the radius of our galaxy. To experience light push, try this. Grab your smartphone's flashlight and then point it at your hand. Make sure it's real close. I bet that you're feeling jack sh** because that's how weak light propulsion is. If these civilizations don't want to be found, then all of these efforts would be as useful as you trying not to spank it for the fourth time today. It all depends on what kinds of civilizations there are, as there could be three kinds. Quiet aliens, they do their best to minimize noise and make themselves as undetectable as possible. Loud aliens don't really care about being found, and grabby aliens go out of their way to destroy other civilizations to prevent being attacked in the future. Now let's try to ignore the dread inducing option number three. I'm not really trying to be a Kurtzgis a copycat as I'm kind of going for the brain rot version of Veritasium right now. Quiet aliens could also employ some scary tactics. They could be really good with illusions. There's this one theory for which the universe we observe is real only up to a certain distance, after which it's all just a simulation meant to hide whatever is out there because the aliens that made it don't want to be bothered. This is actually pretty f***ing dreadful. Am I being Kurzgesagt act again? We could even look for the presence of past civilizations on the Moon, Mercury, Mars or Ceres, a dwarf planet in the inner solar system. They were chosen as the optimal planets for xenoarchaeology because of their climatic condition. Their atmospheres cause very little changes on the surface, so there might be some artifacts that have been sitting there for half a billion years, mostly intact, buried tens or hundreds of meters below the surface. There's a plan to search for surface anomalies, as some of the satellites orbiting the moon can take pictures at such high resolution that each pixel would correspond to 50 centimeters of distance on the surface. Problem is that sending all of those pictures back to Earth for analysis is impossible due to the immensely high requirements for connection speeds. That's why they're currently operating at 100 meters per pixel, which is a much, much lower quality that is not really useful when searching for anomalies, unless you're looking for really huge kilometer-wide anomalies, which we would have already found by now. But we can fix that! We can launch a new satellite with an incorporated artificial intelligence, which can detect potential surface abnormalities. When the AI marks one of the pictures as potentially abnormal, it sends just that picture back to Earth for further study and analysis. The mind-blowing part is that we already have all the technology needed to do something like this. Why even take this we have been visited idea seriously? It sounds so far-fetched, but there's this little thing for which every 100,000 years or so, at least one star system comes within one light year of Earth. A hypothetical civilization a bit more advanced than ours could send a probe into our system within a few years. It's kind of worth a shot, like that Hello Kitty girl that keeps ogling you at the bar at 3am and all you want is for someone to notice you and kiss you and cuddle you. What I'm saying is aliens could be much more than just loud. They could go out of their way to try and make contact with us or whoever is out there to answer their call. Look at this animation. Very often the orbit ratios between moons and their planets are repeating numbers. Let me show you. Three of Jupiter's moons all have a 2 to 1 ratio with each other. Io revolves around Jupiter as quickly as Jupiter rotates on itself, Europa takes twice as long and Ganymede or Ganymede or whatever the f*** is pronounced takes twice as long as Europa. The ratio of 2 to 1 repeats. One thing that has never been observed... Oh, I pricked my ass. 
One thing that has never been observed are particular orbit ratios. A super advanced civilization could alter the orbits of planets or moons in a star system. They could make them the first n prime numbers or the first n numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. And that equilibrium would hold for millions of years before the stabilizing. It could outlive its creators. A benevolent species could go as far as creating an intergalactic internet. A universe spanning network containing millions of years of collective knowledge to which each species could contribute, leaving a trace that would surely outlast its creators and help future civilizations for billions of years to come. There's so many ways we are looking and yet nothing's come up. Does that mean that we're alone? This is an actual question posed by physicist Enrico Fermi, who actually asked if we live in a universe where life should be abundant, where the f is everyone? Back in the day this was a very cocky question because it gave two things for granted, that life in the universe could be abundant and that we were doing a good job at looking for it. Nowadays hypothesis number one has been pretty much confirmed, the Milky Way alone should house plenty of suitable planets. But we're still not sure about our methods, we might be the equivalent of space cavemen with space aids trying to detect space wifi using space sticks and space stones instead of space relaxing and kicking back and space jerking off. The Drake equation tries to estimate the number of advanced civilizations in a galaxy. It poses that such number is the product of, and uh, I need to read it, otherwise I'll forget it, the rate of formations of stars in the galaxy, the fraction of stars with orbiting planets, the number of planets in each solar system, the fraction of those with an environment that has organic life, the fraction of life-bearing planets with intelligent creatures, the fraction of civilizations that are tacky enough to produce detectable signals, and the length of time for which those civilizations produce such signals. This is a wonderful formula, except we have no f clue what the values for the last four variables should be. Global estimates tell us that most galaxies would be devoid of life, whereas optimistic ones tell us that in the Milky Way alone there should be between 1000 and 100 million super advanced species. If a faraway civilization if a faraway civilization wanted to make contact with us, instead of just sending radio signals, which would take light years for each single message, they could send a Bracewell probe. That would be a super advanced robot with a super artificial intelligence capable of holding entire conversations with the inhabitants of whatever planet it might be visiting. Once the probe acquires enough knowledge, it just flies back to its home planet to deliver all of the news. The whole thing would take much less than the total time required to deliver each single message in an interstellar radio communication. This approach can be automated if the Bracewell probes are capable of creating copies of themselves. Self-replicating probes are called von Neumann probes. If each probe created just two copies of itself and each of those then fetched the resource required to each create another two copies, we could have billions, no, trillions, no, quadrillions of probes built within a few dozen reproduction steps. Each probe could then visit a promising star system. The problem with this plan? Well, if a sufficiently advanced civilization existed, then these kinds of probes should have already taken over the entire universe, as the exponential growth from continuous replication is incredibly quick. Some critics of SETI say that this is definitive proof that there is no super advanced intelligence in the observable universe. A counter argument to it is that a species smart enough to make these kinds of probes would probably be smart enough to make them stop replicating after a certain amount of time, or a certain number of copies, or they would just not make them as they would be aware of their super universe ending danger. Infinitely replicating probes, creating infinitely many copies, would consume all of the resources in the universe just to create more and more copies of themselves. Did I just pull another course gesagt? With so many avenues to explore, why isn't everyone spending more on this? Well, for starters, it's not a super promising field of research. Matter of fact, it has had a 0% success rate so far in finding any concrete proof of life on another planet. And governments are not exactly willing to gamble a lot of money on a basically guaranteed loss. I mean, who would? And what is NASA currently doing about SETI? Ever since this guy killed that cool program I told you about, they've done jack. Oh.